Do you know what nobody really tells you about working in cloud security in 2025? It's no longer about patching or catching bad actors or finding open security groups anymore. It's about building and protecting systems that are changing way faster than our processes and our knowledge bases can keep up with. I was recently reading HashiCorp's 2025 cloud complexity report where they surveyed over a thousand tech leaders. And what I found was kind of wild. Almost every company is running multiple cloud providers and nearly three quarters of them said that their platform engineering and security teams don't even work together as a unified function. And to be honest, that's exactly what I've seen across the industry. We've essentially built cybersecurity into this corner when we should have been building bridges from the start. And the biggest truth about this is that the role of a cybersecurity engineer is changing, more so in cloud security. We're not just here to stop bad things from happening. We're here to design systems that make the right things happen by default. But before we get into it, if you're new here, I'm Day. I'm a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon. I spent the last five years in detection engineering, cloud security, threat hunting, instant response, among many other things, basically just trying to figure out how we can keep things safe without slowing the business down. Actually, was kind enough to sponsor this video, and I'll link the full report below if you want to dig deeper. A huge shout out to them for supporting the channel and helping us explore what's really happening in the cloud security space. Also, if you want to stay sharp in your cybersecurity journey, check out the Cyberworks Academy Discord and our newsletter, Cyberworks Unplugged. The Discord is where almost 7,000 cybersecurity learners and professionals connect, share projects, and grow together. And the newsletter is where I go deeper on the industry side. Frameworks, reflections, recaps, and lessons that don't always make it to YouTube. Both links are in the description below. So now let's break down what's really happening in cloud security and what nobody's telling you about where it's heading. So historically, security has always been known as the team of no. No, you can't use that service. No, you can't deploy that pipeline. No, you can't push that code because it doesn't meet some control. And to be fair, most of that came from a good place. We've just been trying to protect the organization. But here's the thing, when you block velocity, people will always find a way around you. And that's why 73% of organizations in the report said that their platform and security teams are not aligned. When security shows up late, it becomes an afterthought. And afterthoughts is what creates shadow systems, shadow cloud, shadow AI, tool sprawl, and more risk. And I've seen it firsthand. The more we say no, the more exceptions get made and the more fragile everything becomes. We see that complexity starts to grow and complexity is the enemy of security. So instead of being the gatekeeper, our job now is to be the enabler, the one who makes security invisible, but impossible to ignore. In cloud security, that means building security guardrails, not gates. It's us creating systems where the secure path is also the fastest one for developers and the business. For example, you don't wanna stop developers from deploying to the cloud. So you can build secure Terraform modules so they can deploy safely by default. You don't want to manually review IAM policies because that would just get really cumbersome. You want to automate least privilege with identity boundaries and policy as code. Also, you don't want to tell teams that they can't use AI or new services. You want to build governance into their workflow so that those services inherit the right security posture automatically. So when your pipeline runs for a code deploy, your secrets can be handled through a secrets management platform like Vault and not hard coded in .m files. And when infrastructure spins up, it can be tagged, monitored, and compliant from the moment it's deployed. Also, when misconfigurations are written in infrastructure code, policy as code can catch them before they can even reach production. And that's what invisible but impossible to ignore looks like in cloud security, in a way that security is embedded into the build process, not bolted onto it after the fact. In this way, you're no longer slowing down your teams. You're building a cloud environment where security scales at the speed of deployment. And that's the difference between security being the team of no and being the team that everyone wants to build with. The report said that 97% of companies are juggling five or more cloud management tools. 52% say that multi-cloud management is their biggest challenge right behind security costs. And at HashiConf, which I went to a few weeks ago, I had a conversation with an infrastructure leader who gave a talk on how their team was migrating away from eight different cloud providers. Eight! 
That's no longer innovation, that's survival. And unfortunately, that's the cycle that most orcs fall into. It starts with tools sprawl, then you lose visibility to those tools, and then that gives you compliance gaps, which you have to spend more money on, and then eventually there's still no alignment. So the real question becomes, how do we stop being a cost center and start being a capability and a business enabler? For cloud security engineers, that starts with thinking like a platform team. I know we've been historically told to think like the attacker, but for a second, start thinking like your platform team. Instead of measuring success by how many alerts you triaged or how many vulnerabilities you found, you can start to measure by how much friction you removed from building securely. You can essentially enable the business by turning repeatable security tasks into reusable infrastructure. If every team is deploying the same IAM roles, network controls, and encryption standards, you can essentially package that into Terraform modules or service blueprints that they can easily consume safely at scale. And you enable the business by owning visibility and reliability instead of just compliance. What that means is unified monitoring that gives your developers clear visibility into their own cloud posture and turns security into something that's more measurable and helpful. And you enable the business by building guardrails that move at the speed of cloud with policy as code, just-in-time access, automated drift detection, and all the things that reduce risk. This is how your work helps the company ship faster and safer and also helps the org to stop seeing you as a overhead and start seeing you as an enabler. And that's the future of cloud security, being the team that builds trust and not bottlenecks. Here's another part of the report that really hit me. Nearly 80% of companies now have platform engineering teams, but less than half of them embed security directly into them. And the ones that do have fewer incidents, better compliance, and more trust, which is by no surprise at all. I mean, personally, at Amazon, I've seen this play out. Some of the best progress didn't come from new tools. It came from a shared ownership. When the same team deploying infrastructure also owns a portion of its security posture, everything changes. You're no longer fighting each other anymore or working against each other. You're essentially working to optimize together, which is why I encourage security engineers to learn how to build systems and not just secure them. If you only know how something is built or only show up after it is built, you're already too late. This is because the real vulnerabilities, which are the ones that cost companies the most time and the most money, usually start at design time not at runtime. So as a security engineer, you want to learn how to think like a builder, understand infrastructure as code, tools like Terraform, because that's where the blueprint for the environment starts from. If you can't read or write the code that deploys the infrastructure, you're just basically reacting to whatever someone else wrote and deciding that it was secure enough. Learn how to automate. Even basic Python or Go can turn a one-off fix into a repeatable control. If you can write scripts that enforce tagging, that help remediate misconfigurations, or even rotate secrets automatically, you've just multiplied your impact across across every account and region. Additionally, learn policy as code. This is the future of governance, not spreadsheets or tickets. It's in version controlled, testable policy logic that runs alongside the rest of your code base. And that's the real shift happening in cloud security right now. It's being done by security engineers who build platforms and not just policies. Security engineers who write guardrails into their pipelines, who understand CI CD security, who design for skill. Those are the ones that every organization wants to keep. And with those guardrails in place, that leads to where the next frontier of cloud security is headed automation and artificial intelligence. Because because if we're creating the systems that run the world, the next question is, how do we protect the systems that are starting to create themselves without our oversight? So we know that the next wave of cloud security is already here, which is an AI and automation. It's moving faster than most security teams can adapt to. As a matter of fact, according to the report, more than half of infrastructure provisioning and deployments are now automated, and over 50% of organizations are actively investing in AI-driven automation for cloud management this year alone. So what this means is that a lot of repetitive security tasks we used to own, like access reviews, compliance checks, and even some parts of detection engineering are gonna be getting absorbed into the pipeline. And you might think of it as a threat to your job, but it's not a threat to your job. It's a shift in your scope of work. So if you wanna stay ahead, you have to start thinking about how to secure automation itself. That means protecting the systems that build the systems, the pipelines, the models, the data flows, and the orchestration logic that keeps all of it running. All right, here's what that looks like in practice. First is securing your pipelines like your production systems. You want to think of CI CD pipelines as something that attackers want to get access to. You want to sign your code when you build it, secure the machines that run your builds, and check that the code libraries you use haven't been tampered with. We've seen a lot of those happen in recent times. Next, you want to understand AI data risk. Learn how prompt injection, data exfiltration, and model poisoning 
actually works because these are now cloud security problems, not just just technical academic research concepts. Third, you want to protect the automation layer. So if you're using stuff like GitHub Actions, Terraform Cloud, Jenkins, or GitLab, you want to make sure that credentials and tokens aren't stored in plain text. You want to have capabilities that can automate secrets rotation and be able to log every infrastructure change as code. Finally, the last thing that you want to consider is to start using AI securely and not fearfully. Learn how to use tools like LLMs or AI-driven analyzers to improve your own workflows, whether it's code review, code writing, policy suggestion, documentation, but with that, ensure that you're building guardrails like data redaction, API isolation, and least privileged tokens for your AI tooling. This is how the engineers who understand how automation works and how to secure it will define the next era of cybersecurity. It's no longer about responding to incidents after the fact. It's now about being more proactive by designing systems that can detect fix and verify themselves before humans even get page. This is where you have the term human in the loop. And honestly, that's where the real fun begins in my own opinion. We're not just protecting the cloud anymore. We're securing the automation and everything that runs the cloud. That's the next layer of impact. And personally, I wanna be part of that. So where does all of this leave us? If AI and automation are redefining how systems are built, then the role of the security engineer is being redefined right alongside it. And this is the new role. It looks nothing like it looked like a few years ago. We're no longer just defending perimeters or chasing down alerts. We're building the infrastructure that makes innovation safe. We're designing systems that secure themselves through code, automation, and intelligent workflows. The best security engineers today and for the future will look more like architects. They'll be able to understand cost, scalability, developer experience, and user impact because those things are now slowly becoming part of security. You can't protect what you don't understand and it's hard to influence what you didn't help to build. So in this new role for security engineers, especially for cloud security, our value is not gonna be just measured by how many incidents or security risks we're able to prevent. It's gonna be measured by how seamlessly we can align security with the velocity of the business because it's moving really fast, especially with AI. It's gonna be about us embedding trust into the foundation of every cloud service, every deployment, every automation. And that's the real shift that's happening across the industry. Security engineers who understand systems, code, automation, are gonna shape the next decade of technology, not just the security of it. And there's a lot more I can get into, but it'll make this video even longer. So if you want to dive deeper into the data and insights behind this video, check out the full HashiCorp 2025 Cloud Complexity Report, which will be linked in the description below. If you want to see what all of this looks like in practice, watch my HashiCom vlog right here. It has real conversations with platform and security leaders who are building the systems we just talked about. I'll see you over there.